Hi, it's Tammy Ramsey with Get Leveled, and on this episode, Sex, Drugs, and Wellness with Dr. Shirley. I'd like to dedicate this episode to the human body for the amazing, sophisticated miracle of a machine that it is. And I hope that after listening to this episode, you want to reconnect with your body. We walk around with these bodies and we're often very disconnected from them. We treat them badly. We poison them. We're ashamed of them. So let's change this year. Let's be proud of our bodies. Let's treat them like the gifts that they are. When we level them up and optimize them, our whole life experience gets better. I often talk about Dr. Shafali, who was on my first episode of this podcast, and she's a clinical psychologist who has really elevated my mind and my entire life. And today I'm going to introduce you to the equivalent who has elevated my health. So she's the Dr. Shafali of my body. Her name is Dr. Shirley, and she is a functional medicine doctor based in Orange County, California, and she runs a functional medicine clinic called Level Up Integrative Health and Med Spa. And she is really a trailblazer in this world because she, in this episode, is not only going to tell you how you can level up your sex life, do some drug myth busting, but she's also going to expose some pretty concerning things about our healthcare system that we all need to know as patients. So stay tuned. You will definitely be glad that you listened to this episode. Dr. Shirley Wayne graduated from USC Medical School and practices a blend of both Eastern and Western medicine. She focuses on natural options and optimizing people's health from within. First of all, the information shared today is not meant to replace your doctor. This is just information and we're just having a conversation. So that's our disclaimer here. Hi, Dr. Shirley. Hey, Tammy. Well, thanks for coming back on. You were on a previous episode with Amandeep talking about the science behind meditation. And I wanted to have you back because you have leveled up my life in so many ways. I don't think people realize what's out there as far as health and wellness goes because we're in this weird no man's land right now in between like conventional medicine and functional medicine, which, you know, we'll get into, but it's just an exciting time in health. And so I wanted you to come on and share all of your wisdom because you always level me up. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) I agree. Now is an exciting time. Earlier this year, the American Medical Association published an article in their journal, JAMA, that explained how functional medicine yields better results for patients than conventional medicine. Esteem is building up towards the push for patients to focus on wellness and prevention and the reversal of disease, as opposed to conventional medicine, which focuses on acute disease, but isn't able to treat the cause all the time. Conventional medicine Medicine is great at treating the symptoms, which is also an important uh, medical care. Um, But we also don't want to neglect other modalities and natural options to help people feel better. First of all, we need our first responders. We need our hospitals. You know, when we have a car accident, we need help immediately. Absolutely. When you need surgery, you need it. Conventional medicine is great for so many things, but it's not great for wellness. And what we're talking about is more of a proactive approach. It's not about treating disease. It's about creating wellness. And so what's your background and why did you even want to become a functional medicine doctor? I'm a dental practitioner and I started out working at Urgent Cares. I found it disturbing when people kept coming in to get refills for their medications. People would come in for refills for their blood pressure medications, their cholesterol medications, medications for acid reflux, and they weren't getting better because those medications only mask the symptoms. So when they stopped, their symptoms would come back. And I didn't feel like I was making a difference, which is why I gravitated towards the functional medicine approach and was able to get a bunch of patients off their medications or at least decrease their dose of medications. So I'll give you an example with the acid reflux, which is really common. People come in for their refill for their purple pill, their Nexium, their Prilosec, and a lot of them have been on that medication for over a decade. 
but when they stop, their symptoms come back and it's painful and uncomfortable. So a functional medicine approach that I have been using has been number one, to address lifestyle because your diet matters, sleep and stress all affect your GI tract, your GI system but also botanicals and natural methods to help reverse the need for medications. And things like licorice root, which is a natural bitter, will close that sphincter above the stomach so acid doesn't end up in the esophagus, giving you heartburn. It also promotes intestinal transit so you don't have that food sitting in your stomach ready to go back up. Things like aloe and okra will coat the intestines and coat the stomach. Glutamine, which is an amino acid, which is like growth factor for your intestinal lining. Your intestinal lining needs glutamine to differentiate, mature, and make tight junctions so that you don't have leaky gut syndrome. I would give people these options and usually within two weeks or so, patients reflux will have resolved completely and they could stop their medications. And that's so great because I read that Nexium causes osteoporosis. Right. So our stomach makes acid for a reason and we need the lower pH to absorb certain nutrients like calcium. So if I keep refilling Nexium for 10 years, I'm going to end up giving somebody osteoporosis. I'm here to help people, not to make people worse or give people additional problems. See, that's so great. We should also talk about your growing up. Like you were exposed to Eastern medicine, right? I was. I am a Chinese American. And uh, growing up, I was exposed to acupuncture, acupressure, bloodletting, and Chinese herbs. And when you grow up like that, not going to the doctor all the time, then you see that there are other ways that you can try to feel better and to get better. I think it's important to remember that there is no one way that is best for everybody, that is also best for every problem. And that's where integrative medicine comes in because you get to personalize and you get to choose what would be best for your patient's issues and how they see the world and their preferences. That's what's so exciting about you because I just found you on the internet. I was like, oh, I think I want a woman doctor. I need a physical. And every time I would go see you, you would level me up, literally. Like you would talk about some new treatment or some new advancement in science. And I started realizing that there's this whole world out there that people don't know about because insurance doesn't cover functional medicine. And we're in this transition period right now. And there's a lot of great things happening with the Institute for Functional Medicine. And Dr. Mark Hyman is doing a lot to help collaborate with insurance companies, because this is the wave of the future. Personalized medicine is the wave of the future. Can you tell us a little bit about like what's out there? Absolutely. So everyone has heard of Ancestry.com and 23andMe. I think that is just so amazing how you can have your DNA checked. We all have DNA variants, the genetic SNPs that change how our metabolism works. And so when you run your data, you can see areas where there are blockages. We want to optimize our bodies and systems as much as possible to prevent disease and to promote wellness. So looking at your genetic variants allows you to address those areas specifically so that pathways don't get blocked and so that your body and your systems can work efficiently. It keeps your body from having to repair yourself constantly. We're like a complex computer. And yet I feel like we spend more time taking care of our backyards or our cars or our houses than we do with our bodies. So what I'm learning is that when you go to the regular doctor, it's more about treating your symptoms of a disease or a problem. And so what you do is actually you fill us up. I liked how you did that when I first met with you. You really took an approach of like, let's look at all your systems. Let's just optimize them all. It almost doesn't matter if you have issues or you don't have issues. You want to always start with like fixing the systems. It's complex, but I think it's important to step outside and look at different options like what you have to offer, because I don't think people realize 
how they can level up their life. And for me, I feel so much better from all the stuff that you've done with me. And it's like, it's little by little. It's not like a quick fix. It's something where you help us optimize our lifestyle. So can you explain how is functional medicine different than conventional medicine? Well, first, conventional medicine is based on the insurance model. And the financial incentives are sometimes not in alignment with the patient's best interests. So, for example, with the insurance model, profit is based on volume of patients, which means that you can't spend a whole lot of time with each patient because you have to see a certain number per hour in order to keep the clinic open. So that limits the time I'm allowed to spend with patients educating them and looking at trends and looking for ways to optimize their health and not wait until they're borderline or past borderline line in active disease. I remember you telling me that at the urgent care, it was so frustrating because you had such a limited amount of time. And when you work in the system of insurance and how all of that plays out, like, why don't you talk honestly about some of the stuff that doctors really have to do? Like, writing prescriptions. and Another thing that patients are not aware of is that when patients are given a prescription medication at their visit, that increases the complexity of their visit. Therefore, the clinic gets to be reimbursed at a higher level. If a patient has a side effect from a medication, that further increases the complexity and the clinic gets to be reimbursed even more. And you get a follow-up visit to also build insurance for. So this is not a way of promoting wellness. This is a way of promoting disease. In my 20s, I worked in private events. And during that time, I had a lot of eye-opening experiences because I would see HMOs come in and they had the best champagne. I was so confused. Like, how, where are they getting their money from? I even remember doing an event and looking at the menu and saying, who's the client? Because it was so high priced. And that's our insurance companies. And then I watched them toast champagne, the finest champagne to toast for like another successful year next year. And so a successful year next year means depriving people of healthcare and allowing people to die. I can see systemically like our issues here that were tied into this system with insurance companies and big pharma and there's different ulterior motives and it's driving the wrong behavior. It really is. Another thing that insurances do to make it harder for patients to get care is by limiting how many issues can be brought up at every visit. We can only address so many issues before the amount of reimbursement gets cut off. And that's difficult for patients because we're all busy and it's hard to take time off work to go see your doctor. So when you actually get the time to go and take care of yourself, you want to cover everything as deeply as possible. Uh, that is how you can actually make connections, you can understand, and that is how you reach towards health. And it's so sad to see our system because I see you like your mood when you go to the urgent care and you're like in the system, it's demoralizing. But then when you help people in your clinic and you see them feel better, I feel like it's the approach little by little, a little becomes a lot. On a previous podcast, Trevor Romain said that, and that's how I feel functional medicine is. You're absolutely right. Functional medicine is additive. Um, you address one part of a system. And what are these systems that we keep talking about? Your immune system um, is a system. Um, your endocrine system is your hormone system. Your liver is your detox system. Your GI tract is your like nutrient absorption system. All these different systems work together. And when you make one tweak in one system, you have effects that impact all the other systems for optimal health. So I'll give you an example. Patients come in wanting to lose weight and sometimes they plateau or they don't even get to start losing weight. And sometimes their hormones aren't optimized. Their hormones, their thyroid could be low. Their adrenals, they could be stressed and the cortisol could be high. Um, they could be nearing menopause 
menopause. And so their sex hormones can be low. Your hormones can make it really hard for you to lose weight. But even if those are all optimized, it, it could still be hard to lose weight. And I explain it to patients like this. We store a lot of toxins in our fat cells. And so when you are losing weight, all those toxins go to your liver to be conjugated and eliminated. If all those toxins go to your liver and your liver doesn't have the proper nutrition to do its job, then your liver is not going to be able to push those toxins through. Your liver becomes overwhelmed when it has a lack of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, enzymes, amino acids that it needs for all of its pathways to work. What happens then is your liver sends a message to your thyroid saying, slow down, slow that metabolism down because I am backed up. And when your thyroid slows down, well, then you stop losing weight. And that would be an explanation for your plateau. So supporting the liver and supporting elimination is actually a good way to help people support weight loss. Wow, that's so interesting and something that a lot of people probably wouldn't even think of. And we're so focused on calorie counting and just weight loss that we're not often thinking of the whole system and all of the things that contribute to weight loss. So I'm so glad that you know about all of this. Okay, let's talk about IV therapy because I didn't even know that it was beneficial at all. And I know a lot of people say it's just expensive pee. We're not talking about just taking a bunch of vitamins and peeing it out. That's not what this is. This is targeted. This is specific personalized medicine. And so explain the benefits of IV therapy versus taking a vitamin. IV therapy is a way to get high doses of 100% absorbed nutrition. I, of course, always recommend oral nutrition, but sometimes you just can't get the absorption needed to treat an issue. So for example, if you have the flu and you're wiped out and you're in bed, you can eat oranges, but one orange has 250 milligrams of vitamin C. So how many oranges can you eat per day? <laughs> um, so a step up above oranges, you can also supplement with powders, with chewables, with gummies. But after about 500 milligrams, you're pretty much maxed out in terms of how much you've taken up through your GI tract. When you do IV, you can get 10,000, 15,000 milligrams all at once in your blood. That's an incredible antioxidant effect. It is great at decreasing inflammation, helping you feel better right away, boosting your immune system, helping your immune system do its job and kill the virus and kill the bacteria that's just turning your body into a huge mess. So another pleasant surprise about you, Dr. Shirley, is that you are a trauma-informed physician. Can you explain what that is? So being trauma-informed means that I have the approach of asking patients what happened to you instead of asking them what's wrong with you. Adverse childhood events and also toxic stress in adulthood increases inflammation and dramatically increases the risk of disease. It's so important to take the mind-body connection into account because without addressing stress, it's really hard to treat the root of problems. You're chasing after symptoms that just won't go away. Yeah, because every thought you have is a whole chemical reaction, right? Like if you have a stressful thought, you're literally, it's like a lever, you're like squirting cortisol. You like can poison yourself by your thoughts. Absolutely. You are so right. So every thought we have releases peptides, releases hormones, releases neurotransmitters into our brain. Sometimes when you have toxic stress, you're not even aware of these subconscious loops that we have in terms of our thoughts and our experiences and how we react to these experiences that continue to release inflammatory cytokines and hormones into our bodies that end up adding to damage to our body and ultimately disease. This is what's been fun about going to you is you are integrative. So that means that you offer so many options for people and You've done muscle testing on me, which I have to say I was so skeptical of. I thought you were getting really weird and I did not believe it. But after you did it on me, my husband, my kids, my friends, my friend's parents, I saw that like you were nailing things. And I think that 
that muscle testing is like a way for you to connect with your patient and help them open up. And you're not here to like be their therapist. You don't need to know all the details of their childhood pain. But can you talk about what you do to screen for toxic stress? There's a wonderful screening questionnaire that was used in the ACE study. It goes over adverse childhood experiences. There are five personal traumas and five familial traumas that are assessed. So personal traumas include physical abuse, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, emotional neglect, and physical neglect. And familial trauma includes addiction, domestic violence, experience with incarceration from a family member, mental illness, or divorce or abandonment in the family. It only takes four or higher to experience dramatic changes in terms of mental and physical health. For example, with four or more traumas, a person is 1.9 times more likely to be obese. 2.4 2.4 times more likely to be anxious, 3.6 times more likely to be depressed, and 7.2 times more likely to be addicted to alcohol. This is why doctors should not know the details of your childhood, but just to know like the level, the number, like, did you have this toxic stress? Because it directly impacts your health. And so when we walk around and we're all like overweight, high blood pressure, all this stuff, and we're like treating the symptoms This is getting to the root of so much of the top 10 leading causes of disease. And and people are not talking about it. It's so crazy. And you know why? It's because of shame. Because I had the opportunity to spend a day with Dr. Vincent Felitti, who was a co-author of that study. And he said that the information is progressing so slowly because of shame. And I think that's such an interesting phenomenon that like, Here we are as human beings, we have this information that we can help our health, yet because of shame and stigma, we don't focus on it. So instead, we just go take our purple pill or we go mask all these symptoms that lead to other symptoms. Then then we have to take another medication and then it's all tied up in this weird profit system. It's really complex. I think it's wonderful that there's a trend towards integrating mental and emotional health care with physical care because the two are tied intimately. One affects the other. Yeah. Like think about it, our DNA. When I get scared of a spider, like I've never had a massive spider bite that told me that spiders are scary. I just always knew, you know, like it's in our DNA Mm -hmm. to know that like spiders are scary. And so it's almost like nature and nurture are kind of like a circle. It's like everything is joined and they're one. Because if we have an experience, then that experience gets imprinted into our software or like our DNA. And then that kind of gets repeated back to us because then that's our code that tells us how to live. So our experiences then become our future. And so I think that nature and nurture are always working together and to separate them is to like miss 50% of the whole picture. As a trauma-informed physician, I treat toxic stress as matter of fact. And when you do that, then it really decreases the shame and stigma because we just address it as something that we all deal with and people just have had different experiences, but it is something that we need to address it's just, it's part of taking care of your overall health and well-being. Yeah. And pain is part of the human experience. We don't need to be ashamed of it. We just need to reconcile it so we can release it so we can be healthy. And I just love that about you because when I go to see you, it's like a mix between the beauty shop because you do all these cool laser facials and stuff, the doctor, and even like, let's talk about sexual health, because I know you're a big fan of leveling up people's sex lives. So what options do you offer? So sexual wellness is such an important part of just us being human. It's important for us to feel fulfilled in multiple ways. And this is one of those ways where we feel connected with other people. It's great for mental health. It's great for for physical health. This is okay for people that are not in a partnership. Self-stimulation. Absolutely. It's good. 
It produces the same health benefits, which why don't you tell us what are the health benefits from sex? From sex, we reduce cortisol, which is a stress hormone that causes inflammation, which makes everything worse. We increase oxytocin, which helps us bond and connect with other people. This is great for increasing your cardiovascular system. It's a great stress reducer. It is just fantastic. It's a good way to feel in touch with yourself in addition to other people. And this is another example of how we go outside of ourselves looking for things, but we have our own internal pleasure center. You know, like our bodies are amazing. And if we just level them up and take care of them, they will take care of us. And I have to say, like when I literally just went to you to get a physical and then pretty soon I'm going down all these journeys with you. And one day I went in and you said, do you want me to draw some blood and then take your platelet rich plasma and inject it into your (laughs) vagina and your clitoris? And I'm like, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm happy with my lady parts. I'm feeling good about it. And you kept saying, like, why not level up? Don't you want more sensation? And so I decided, okay, why not? And I did it. And I have to say, it's so fun. Like, why are we not demanding more pleasure, ladies? We should be taking care of ourselves and being happier. Like, we don't need to go take antidepressants and go eat a ton of food and drink a bunch of alcohol. Like, we can level up in other ways. And I joke that my, quote, ministry is to help women want to have sex with their husbands because I know quite a few women who don't want to have sex with their husbands. And I think, again, going back to the nature nurture thing, I think on the nurture side, there is usually some barriers, like maybe communication problems. Maybe she resents him because he's not helping enough, or there's usually an issue there. However, there are times when everything's great. And that's when I refer him over to you because there could sometimes be a physiological issue. So can you explain how you can help people level up their sex lives and what you offer? I agree. Sexual wellness can be complicated. It could be due to an emotional issue or it could be due to a communication issue between you and someone else, um, in which case therapy is highly recommended. But it could also be a physical issue. It could be diabetes, high blood pressure. It could be your thyroid. It could be your sex hormones, which decrease as we age. Um, it could just be a decrease in libido. But there are ways for us to address the physical issues and then also level up your whole experience. So specifically pertaining to sexual wellness, I do have options that include topical creams, injectables, oral medication, peptides that increase libido, medications that increase blood flow. All these are ways for us to have more pleasure. What I love is that what you offer are things that are going to optimize our systems. Did I want you to put a shot into my lady parts? No, not at all. I was not interested. However, once I learned about it and I thought, oh, well, it's like fertilizer in a way. And that leads me to ketamine. Your ketamine clinic is really helping people, but yet it's controversial in a way. So can you explain what ketamine is and what it does? Sure. Ketamine has been around since the 1950s. It has been FDA approved for a long time. Um, It's been used to treat pain in children in the hospital. It's used for treatment of pain in adults. I used to use ketamine IV for patients with migraines in the hospital setting. It's also used in the OR to help induce anesthesia. I think that's where a lot of the concern comes from that it's often used on the streets in a way to bring about dissociation or an out-of-body experience, which people can fear. But I do point out that there are other substances such as alcohol, but they do absolutely nothing good for us. Alcohol ruins the liver, increases inflammation, and can cause slowness in our nervous system so that we don't make the best decisions or that we get into car accidents. But ketamine, on the other hand, has benefits official results. Studies show that ketamine can increase brain-derived growth factor to help our brain make more connections. When you are under chronic stress, you have a net loss of nerve connections. 
such that when you do an MRI of the brain, you can actually see thinning of the cortex of the brain, which seems scary, but we can actually bring that back with lifestyle change, with meditation, yoga, prayer, exercise. So ketamine is a way of helping your brain heal itself from trauma. And the mild dissociative effect when used under doctor supervision and under very close scrutiny in terms of how many milligrams you get and it's weight dose and you're under supervision, you're being monitored. That mild dissociative effect really helps you deal with anxiety because it gives you the ability to put something that's bothering you aside so you can focus on what needs to be done in your life, taking care of your family or going to work or going to school. Ketamine is also great at addressing acute suicidality. Within 45 minutes, suicidal ideation can subside. If you're taking oral Prozac or Zoloft, it can take up to six weeks. And when you're feeling so awful that you can't get out of bed and every day is hard, you don't have that much time to wait. Plus, with those other options of antidepressants, they level you down. They level down your sex life. They have all these other side effects. I tried ketamine at your clinic because you showed me the data that showed that it actually does increase neural connections. And so I wanted that. Who doesn't want improved cognition? And and what it did for me was really that disassociative effect is so amazing because you look at your life from like a macro perspective. It's so weird how drugs work, but we need to like take the stigma away from drugs too, because everything is a drug. Sugar is a recreational drug. Sugar causes inflammation and we stuff ourselves with sugar every day. (laughs) Yeah. And then the people with diabetes shoving the sugar down are judging the alcoholics. I mean, we all just need to see that everything is a chemical and we just have to understand that if we want to level up our lives, we want to put in the right chemicals in our body, whether it's from the plant or from a lab, it matters what we put in our body. Right. Ultimately, it's about chemistry. It doesn't really matter where something came from, if it's natural or bioidentical or synthetic. You're looking at the risk and benefit ratio. And if the benefits are worth it, then it's worth considering. So in addition to boosting brain connections, ketamine also increases nerve connections in the rest of your body. It's systemic. So I found that patients with inflammatory bowel disease with alternating constipation and diarrhea After getting ketamine IV treatments, their gut normalizes and the diarrhea goes away. I've also seen that patients with nerve damage from diabetes with numbness and tingling and burning in their feet, I've seen them experience an improvement in their symptoms and their neuropathy from ketamine IV treatments as well. It's so cool. And like some of the experiences that I've had with you and some of the people that we've been around, I'm like, this is so next level. Like people need to experience this. I I feel so grateful, Dr. Shirley, that I know you. I feel like crying right now because you really have leveled up my life. Like we have had the most coolest experiences and, and you're helping my brain and you're allowing me to like see myself and my life from a different perspective. And with what you're doing with these retreats where you're helping people, the medically supervised retreats is insane. It's taking nature and nurture together and really helping people get to the root of what's weighing them down. I am so lucky that I have a team that helps me integrate all these different options for patients to experience to level up their wellness. Before I went to you, I didn't know that I wasn't leveled up. I didn't realize that I would be able to feel so good. And it's important that people know this is out there because we get stuck in our little systems and then we're just like these robots and we just are sheeple and we just follow what they tell us. And if you only just go to the doctor for your yearly physical and you never invest in wellness and you don't do any kind of research or learn about what's out there, you are not going to have the same life experience as somebody who has access to all this stuff because this is like mental health. This is emotional well-being, sexual health, physical health. A year ago, I thought I was okay. Compared to now, I feel so good. And 
it's just little by little, all these little things that you tell us about really help. And I love watching my friends come to you and, and we all joke like, ooh, doctor, feel good. And it's all like feel good naturally with a little bit of conventional medicine. It's not to bash the system or anything. It's just to utilize what is out there. You're like a trainer for our engines. That's a really nice metaphor. Thank you. (laughs) Once you feel better, you don't want to go back. Habits are hard to change, but once you get the benefits, there's no way you would stop. Quality of life is so important. And I think that conventional medicine focuses on bad numbers more so than the whole person. And that is why it's so important to integrate functional medicine into your overall health care. I heard exosomes are an up-and-coming stem cell therapy. Can you talk a little bit about those? Exosomes are pockets of growth factors that are in stem cells. But if you only take stem cells, what happens is after about 30 million stem cells, your body will destroy the rest. So you can't take advantage of more. But exosomes, you you take these vesicles, these pockets of the active ingredients in stem cells, and you can concentrate it. So with one treatment of exosomes, you would need 100,000 to 300,000 million stem cells, which you just can't get because our body will destroy more than 30 million. But these are great for rejuvenating damaged and arthritic joints. It's great at rejuvenating and helping your tendons, your ligaments, your muscles heal. It's also great at injecting IV for the systemic effects where people feel like, oh, I'm sleeping better. I have more energy. I'm focusing more. I need less of my medications. I just feel great. And so I feel like this is something that people just have to know that it's out there. In addition to hormone replacement, in addition to peptide treatment, This is just one more thing, one more resource that is available to us. It's like next level regenerative medicine. It really is. And I tell people your health is like a log flowing downstream on a river. It's always going in one direction. It takes effort to just stay in place and it takes even more effort to get yourself upstream. And so that's why we have to be proactive. Totally. And it's like, once you get into it, it's so fun. You want to like feel good. Because I think at the end of the day, everyone just wants to feel good and be happy. And the being happy, you cannot be happy if your microbiome isn't healthy. So can you talk a little bit about the microbiome? Yes. Functional medicine places a high importance on your gut It sounds odd, but food goes through us. It's not in us. It's what we break down and then absorb are the nutrients that actually become part of our bodies and become the building blocks of everything we are, all of our hormones, all of our neurotransmitters, everything. But our gut is also really sensitive. A little bit of stress can make it so that we don't rest and digest because we are in fight or flight mode. When we decrease our acid in our stomach, either through stress from our lifestyle or through Nexium, heartburn medications, what happens is we don't get enough acid going into our intestines. And when we don't get enough acid, not only do we not absorb our nutrients, we also don't foster a healthy microbiome because our pH is too high. We need an acidic level to kill off the bad bacteria and bad yeast. When we have an overgrowth of unhealthy microbiota, we end up with leaky gut. Now people say, isn't leaky gut a fake, weird, controversial, woo-woo diagnosis? It's really not because it's very clearly established in the literature that there is something called intestinal permeability, and that increases overall inflammation in our body, which makes everything worse. When you have a leaky gut, we have little portions, little sequences from our food that should not be leaking through. But if they are, our immune system will attack it with antibodies because they shouldn't be there. And these antibodies can also now attack areas of our own body that share those similar sequences. These antibody complexes may drop in our joints and give us rheumatoid arthritis, or may drop in our skin and give us eczema and other rashes. It may give us just foggy thinking because of inflammation in our brain. So addressing our gut is so important. 
That's crazy. We're like these complex ecosystems. And then you told me like, I mean, obviously we need antibiotics. I'm grateful for them. They save lives. However, the overuse of them can be dangerous. Right. Um, Antibiotics are definitely overused. Every 15 minutes, somebody dies from an antibiotic resistant illness. And that's really scary to me because after about four to five times of using the same antibiotic, it starts losing its potency. We start getting resistant. So it's scary to me when I'm at urgent care and people come in once or twice a year with a cold and they get antibiotics because antibiotics damage mitochondrial DNA. And we need mitochondria in all of our cells to make ATP energy so that that cell can do its job. Whether it's a liver cell or a hormone-making cell, it's got to do its job. When our mitochondria DNA gets damaged, we're not optimized. We're not working efficiently. This actually makes sense to me because from an evolution perspective, it's believed that mitochondria were initially bacteria that our eukaryotic cells enveloped and took into our own cells. And so it makes sense that when you're taking an antibiotic such as ciprofloxacin, that some of those mitochondria get damaged because they were bacteria to begin with. So are we basically bacteria? Did we start as bacteria? <laughs> we definitely have incorporated kind of. bacteria into our cells and we have bacteria on the outside of our cells, in our gut mm-hmm. and on our skin. And order for us to survive, in order for us to be healthy. And that leads me to my ketamine experience. I just have the visualization that we're bacteria on a yoga mat and that (laughs) we all need to focus on our own poses instead of getting on each other's yoga mats. Like ketamine has a way of helping you see the world and get lessons from it. It gives you clarity. It's so crazy. And what's great about your approach is that when we take away the things that impair health and add the things that create health, the disease can go away on its own oftentimes, don't you think? Right. A lot of times disease will reverse itself and food is genetic code. It stimulates reactions to happen. And so it's important to remember that food is nutrition. It's not just something we put in our bodies when we're hungry so that we're not starving, right? It doesn't help to just look at the organ by itself. The organ works in a system. All the systems work together. Have to look at the whole person and address both the mind and the body um, so that we can treat symptoms and the cause. Otherwise, it's just not a great way to approach health. It's important to note that we all have stress. Life is stressful and there is way too much stuff that we have to do every day. But stress causes anxiety and dis-ease, which eventually becomes disease and a medical (laughs) condition that we then have to treat. Yep, that's why it's all tied together. You know, when we were talking about advanced lab testing, we were talking about testing the genome. But there's another lab test that I actually use even more, and that's the stool test which sounds a little bit intimidating to do, um, but you do it at home and it lets you know about your gut health. It lets you know if you have H. pylori giving you ulcers and heartburn. It lets you know if you have an overgrowth of unhealthy bacteria in your small intestine. It lets you know if you have an overgrowth of candida yeast or parasites. Also checks to see if you have celiac disease and you have an allergic reaction to gluten. Also checks for zonulin and and so you can see how much of a leaky gut you actually have. These are all ways for us to address intestinal gut health because then we know what we're targeting and it's just not trial and error that takes time. It's a better way than shot in the dark approaches. So let's do some drug myth testers because we live in California. So cannabis became legal here. And I do see people who are maybe overweight, have diabetes. They criticize cannabis users, say it's a drug and they judge them. What is healthy and what isn't healthy when it comes to drugs? Well, let's talk about cannabis specifically. We have endocannabinoid receptors in our body and it is anti-inflammatory and it really does have beneficial effects for us. It helps with pain, it can help with headache, can help with anxiety, can help with insomnia, can help with muscle spasm. There are actually medical benefits. There's even some studies that show a potential future anti-cancer benefit in addition to a regular protocol. So this is actually something that 
can benefit you. But for some people, if you have a genetic tendency towards paranoia, that can make it worse. For some people with hormone imbalances, that can also make it worse. Overuse can give you intractable nausea and vertigo, which obviously is not the intended use, but that's also a side effect. It also slows down our time perception, so it can make it more dangerous for us to drive. There are limitations and effects that we do have to be careful about, but as long as it is used with care, then I do support the legalization of cannabis. So would you say if you had to choose from A or B, A is you drink daily and you eat ice cream. Or B is you do yoga daily and you ingest cannabis daily via like a tincture oil, not smoking it so it doesn't hurt your lungs. What's the healthier option? Oh, option B, (laughs) without a (laughs) doubt. And in yoga, you can find yourself. So then you get the mental thing going, the mind body. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about you. We can talk so openly about sex, drugs, and everything with you, Dr. Shirley. You don't, you're not embarrassed about anything. And that's an important thing too, because I'm sorry, who really tells their doctor the truth? (laughs) It can be very embarrassing. I feel so lucky to be able to go to a doctor that I can tell the total truth to, who doesn't judge me, who will level me up and help my whole family like it's so cute when you did a be a doctor for a day like you give back Mm -hmm. and do mentoring with like mary's jane beauty and you're doing all this stuff out there in the community and i think we're only at the tip of the iceberg with you and all that you have to help us with and once they get a taste of good health it's addicting because it feels good and that's all we want that's why people are shoving ice cream down their throat and the alcohol because they want to feel good but then you feel horrible we're still all chasing the same thing but you do it in a way it does take longer it's little by little it's a lot of natural options and we you know exercise and eating right and everything but by optimizing those systems then you have like long-term, super deep happiness and contentment and you feel great. Yeah. Really holistic medicine, taking care of the whole person, not just a disease is really the way to go. And that's, what's the most fulfilling part of practicing integrated medicine. I do both conventional and functional medicine. So each one has its place. And I have been astounded by all the benefits adding functional medicine to my practice has brought about. Yeah, it's so fun leveling up with you. I'm just so grateful. Thank you so much for your time and for teaching us. And how can people find you? I am on the web like everyone else, (laughs) levelupthealthcare.com. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook and Yelp. Okay. And I'll put all those links in the episode notes and, um, You have a lot of neat stuff with wellness packages, and I'm excited for 2020 because I know you're doing those cool retreats where you're really going to help people, just like like how very well-respected physicians like Gabor Mate is doing Mm -hmm. these plant medicine retreats um, because he understands the benefit of combining the mind and the body. And as a physician, you can utilize your skills to heal trauma, which then heals your health. And it's like, you can't separate it. So when you don't separate it, then you get it and you see how great it is. And it's definitely the wave of the future. I am so excited. There is just so much coming out right now. And the movement towards functional medicine is astounding. And I think now is just a really good time in medicine to learn about everything that the mind can do and what the body can do. There's so much more we can talk about. So we'll definitely have you back. But thank you so much for taking the time today and for sharing this with us. Thank you, Tammy. I always learn so much from Dr. Shirley, and I hope that you benefited from this episode She has given me the gift of functional medicine and it's really changed my life. I feel like I leveled up and I hope that you will level up too. We're going to see a lot this year in the news with functional medicine. Dr. Mark Hyman out of the Cleveland Clinic is really doing some remarkable things, taking on the food industry and just, it's just time to expose what's really going on. It's really the year of transparency and clarity. So Let's level up these vessels that we've been given. Let's honor them and love them and get the most out of this trippy experience that we call life. Thanks for listening. (music) 